and I know that we uh, have a couple more people entering, so we'll, we'll hold on tight for just a, another uh, another uh, 30 seconds or so, and we'll, we'll begin this. So thank you everyone for, for being uh, here this afternoon on this uh, in, in important day in our, in our country here. Great. We'll begin in, in, in just a moment for the uh, the last people who just joined here. If you would uh, please turn, uh, make sure your computer is muted in the in the lower right hand uh, lower left hand corner, and on the speaker presentation in the in the upper uh, upper right hand corner would give a, a better presentation for you here. Well, I know we have a, a, a tight time frame, so um, we can we can begin here. So everyone, uh, thank you so much for uh, for being here for this uh, press conference to introduce Minnesota's uh, Prove It First bill, which is being introduced right now into into the Minnesota legislature. I'm uh, Chris Knapp, the executive director of Friends of the Boundary Waters Wilderness. For over 40 years, uh, Friends of the Boundary Waters Wilderness has been a leader in protecting, preserving, and restoring the boundary waters and the greater Quetico Superior ecosystem. Today is um, obviously a, a very momentous day for, for our country here. Uh, this press conference is, is about three things. It is about vision, it is about leadership, it is about service. It is about a vision of protecting Minnesota's natural resource resources, especially our water resources, and about protecting human health. It is about the leadership of those elected officials, nonprofit organizations, and businesses, and the members of those organizations that support that vision. And finally, it is about service, especially the public service of our elected officials that have the, the good of all of Minnesota in mind here. Prove it first is a, a very simple, straightforward um, uh, legislation. And uh, We'll, uh, it, it, it is about uh, protecting, uh, uh, it, it, it is common sense legislation that would protect all of Minnesota's waters from the boundary waters uh, to Lake Superior and beyond from copper sulfide mining. The law is straightforward. Before a copper sulfide mine could operate in Minnesota, the law would require proof that a copper sulfide mine has operated elsewhere in the United States safely for at least 10 years and has been closed for at least 10 years before such a mine could operate in Minnesota. This law was in effect in Wisconsin for, for nearly 20 years and successfully protected that state from copper sulfide mining. In short, Minnesota should not be a guinea pig for, for copper sulfide mining. My uh, PowerPoint is not not advancing here, uh, but I have my uh, the next panel has uh, all the, the many legislative sponsors here. We have uh, 16 legislative sponsors right now, uh, some of whom can't make it here, including uh, Senator Dibble and Senator Chris Eaton and Representative Alice, Alice Hausman, and, and we're grateful for for their support. We also have the support of, of many nonprofit organizations and, and businesses, and, and we're, we're fortunate that we have representatives from five of those organizations here today uh, to, to, to speak. The, the, the schedule for uh, this afternoon's program is this. I will introduce our, our legislative uh, 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 members here. There are six of them, and then uh, each of them will speak. And then I'll introduce uh, each of the nonprofit representatives. Again, we have five of those. We'll, we'll take uh, questions and answers uh, from the press at that point. If you would please uh, unmute and, and turn your video on, uh, members of the press, so that we can see you. And then we'll, 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 we'll uh, conclude this press conference at one o'clock sharply here. So um, without further ado, we'll begin uh, with, uh, with Senator Jen McEwen from, uh, uh, from Duluth. Uh, Senator McEwen, please begin. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm delighted to be here and to join all of you today in this our official announcement of the Prove It First legislation being introduced into the Minnesota um, legislature. And I'm so proud to join all of these sponsors, um, my colleagues, and also these um, organizations who have done such excellent work on behalf of the people of Minnesota for many years. Um, uh, looking out for our health and uh, the well-being of our environment. Um, I became involved in, in this work um, some years ago, but um, I, I, I guess what, I, what has really driven me to want to 
be the lead author of this legislation is my grounding in Duluth. Um, I, I represent the beautiful city of Duluth that is on the zenith of the Great Lakes um, in the Lake Superior watershed, um, right where the St. Louis River empties into Lake Superior uh, via the Duluth Harbor. And um, I know that my community for years now has struggled to be heard in the debate over copper sulfide mining in these proposals for northeastern Minnesota. Um, leaders throughout our community, regardless of their political position or their, their feelings about this type of mining, have asked for evidentiary hearings so that we could have a real honest view of what these proposals would look like, but we were denied that opportunity. So we have never actually had a clear vetting of the polymet proposal in particular. Um, so there's a lot of concern in my community about the polymet proposal and also then about the opening of the door to perhaps more of these types of mines in northeastern Minnesota in the Duluth complex that runs all the way down from the range um, to just north of Duluth, right north of Duluth. Um, it, it really is, is a huge threat to my community in, in various ways. Our identity as Duluthians is really based upon the fact that we live on um, this, the greatest of all the lakes, Lake Superior. Um, our economy is based on that clean water and living on that beautiful body of water. Um, as I said, our identity is wrapped up in who we are as Duluthians and what we value, why we live there in the first place. Um, Duluth, as many of you know, is built up on a hill, so um, pretty much anywhere in Duluth where you are, you can kind of turn your head and you can look out and you can see Lake Superior and it extends out to the horizon. It's, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful, it's a view and I've traveled many places in the world and my dad told me when I was growing up in Duluth, we went out to Hawks Ridge often and he said, you know, you may travel other places and you'll start to realize just what we have here. It, it is one of the most beautiful places in the world. And he's right. It is one of the most beautiful places in the world to live. And um, we take so much pride in that in Duluth, in where we live and in our clean water. So we really see this as a threat and we really do not, uh, we're not willing to serve as a test case um, for a bunch of um, wealthy, um, super, super wealthy billionaire corporations coming into our area to do these experimental um, projects in our region that put our economy at risk, that put our public health at risk, um, and that put our, our, our whole region in danger. And we are going to insist that they prove it first. And so um, that just gives a little bit of background for why I, I am a, so passionate about this legislation and about this issue. And, um, and am going to work really hard to move it forward. So thanks for joining us today. Great. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Senator McEwen, for, for that statement here. I know that uh, Senator Omar Fateh has a, a legislative uh, hearing at 1230. So Senator, if you would, uh, why don't you please give your statement now uh, as well? Thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for letting me speak. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad to be here today with uh, all of you to continue to s express my support uh, for the Prove It First legislation. Um, joining my, my colleagues and uh, a great, great, awesome coalition. Um, and I want to continue to stress that um, this is also, also a social justice issue. Um, in their work to protect uh, the treasures of Northern Minnesota, uh, the Friends of the Boundary Waters uh, have done an excellent job of educating folks uh, about this idea of uh, environmental justice. Uh, as a senator, what this idea means to me is that environmental policymaking uh, needs to be done in such a way where we are taking input from uh, people of all races, um, socioeconomic backgrounds, gender identities, and so on, um, so that no group is disproportionately uh, suffering from uh, the, downsides, the, down, the downsides of our decision making. Um, with this understanding of environmental justice, the current plans for copper sulfide mining uh, in northern Minnesota are unjust. Uh, we have concerns 
uh, for the long-term health and sustainability of our internationally treasured uh, natural resources. Uh, and in turn, we are concerned about the health and well-being of the people of Northern Minnesota, including our indigenous communities who have uh, stewarded this land since long before uh, French explorers arrived in 1680. Uh, as of now, our concerns have not been adequately addressed uh, and Northern Minnesota does not belong to multinational uh, mining conglomerates. Uh, it belongs to us, the people of Minnesota uh, and the people of the world. Uh, if for-profit interests want to come into our state and extract our national treasures uh, and they claim that they can do so safely without long-term damage to our water, uh, our ecosystem uh, and the people of Northern Minnesota uh, and Minnesota, then they must be able to prove it first. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you so much, Senator, for, for your statement there. Uh, we'll now have a statement from uh, Representative uh, Jim Dabney. Thank you, Chris. Privileged to be here today with, with so many uh, good folks. Minnesotans have, long, have, Minnesotans have a long tradition of bringing their families to the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. It's a special place for many, one where memories are made and families draw closer. When we protect the Boundary Waters, America's most visited wilderness, from irresponsible copper sulfide mining, we preserve not just wilderness, wildlife, and waters, but unique opportunities to connect with nature and find our place in the world. And in fact, we know that a majority of Minnesotans want to see the Boundary Waters preserved from this threat. But when we protect the Boundary Waters, we also protect 17,000 jobs and $913 million in tourism revenue for the businesses of the area and the state of Minnesota. The Boundary Waters attracts people from across the country and around the world. Area businesses, outfitters, grocery stores, youth summer camps, and many others rely on those visitors for revenue. Many other states that also, like Minnesota, are rich in outdoor recreation opportunities are looking at ways to enhance the outdoor recreation business sector. Minnesota should find ways to enhance our outdoor recreation econ economy and create more good paying family supporting jobs. But in order to do that, we need to protect what we have now by making sure that corporations prove it first. Thank you, Chris. Great, thank you so much, Representative Daphne. We'll now have uh, Representative uh, Kelly Morrison speak. Thank you and good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Representative Kelly Morrison and I'm also a practicing OBGYN. Part of the reason I ran for office in the first place was because I wanted to be a voice for science and evidence-based policymaking in the legislature. We are currently on a course to proceed with a series of copper sulfide mining projects in our state that have just not been adequately vetted in terms of their potential human health effects. Copper sulfide mining has never been done in Minnesota and it is very different from the iron mi mining that we are used to here. It has been called the most toxic industry in America by the Environmental Protection Agency. It has also never been done without an accident and copper sulfide mining is a much riskier kind of mining than iron mining, particularly in water rich Minnesota. The process creates sulfuric acid when it is exposed to air and water, which can leach heavy metals like mercury, lead, and arsenic into the water. These are known neurotoxins, which are associated with abnormal brain development and a range of neurodevelopmental disorders. We already know that 10% of babies born, al born along Minnesota's North Shore are born with unhealthy levels of mercury based on a study done back in 2012. In 2014, groups represented more, representing more than 30,000 Minnesota doctors, nurses, and other health professionals asked Minnesota agencies to conduct a health impact assessment for the PolyMet mine. That request was denied, and no health impact assessment was ever required or conducted for the PolyMet sulfide mine project. We know that developing fetuses and young children are particularly susceptible to these heavy metals. As an obstetrician, I find this risk to be especially concerning. And as a physician and a Minnesotan who cares about the future of the people, water, and land of our state, I find it imperative that we are as certain as possible about the safety of these projects before we proceed with them. Prove it first is a way to help us do that. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, uh, Representative Morrison, for that, for that powerful statement. We'll now have a statement from uh, Senator Patricia torres Ray. Uh, Senator? Hello, everyone. I am delighted to be here. I represent, my name is Patricia torres Ray. I represent Senate District 63, which includes Minneapolis and Richfield in the Minnesota Senate. I am delighted to be part of a very large coalition that are the Friends of the Boundary Waters. And the Friends of the Boundary Waters are not only in Duluth and the region, they are also in the Twin Cities, they are around the state of Minnesota, and they are around the world. We are committed to moving this legislation forward, and I am totally committed not only to strongly support this bill, this proposal, but also to find the support that is necessary to find a majority that will move this bill forward in the Minnesota Senate. I would like to tell you why I am so committed to this. There are many reasons, but the most important ones are that this bill is asking for something very, very reasonable. It's asking that we make these companies proof that they will not be causing pollution before they receive a permit. We are protecting the land and the water, and we are doing this based on science. We are also putting the health and the well-being and the safety of people in the region and our state first. We have to stop as legislators this trend where we have the experts being hired by the companies to, to give us a message about what is that we need to do and how we need to act in order to give these permits. We need to include people, and I am happy to say that this coalition includes a very large voice from tribal nations. Thank you. I also want to tell you that we cannot continue to allow these companies to go unchecked we need to base on le our legislation on science. And finally, I am very excited to tell you that with this legislation, we will be protecting taxpayers from being responsible for cleaning up responsibilities that will cost taxpayers millions of dollars. I am excited to be part of all of this effort and I strongly support the bill and intend to be a voice wherever I go, whether it's in urban communities, suburban communities, or even outside of our state. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Senator, for that, that great statement here. Uh, we'll now have uh, Senator uh, Steve Kuczynski. Senator? Thank you, um, Chris. And mm, so, is it okay? Uh, it, okay, thank you, Chris. Um, we're going to hear from testifiers today talking about the science and the facts and the data and public opinion and a quarter million visitors every year, all on our side of simply proving it first. And the first time I heard this proposal, I, I was on board from day one. And as I've studied it, as I've heard from other testifiers, as I've talked to Chris at a variety of locations, I'm becoming a more and more a fan of simply proving it first and providing a high standard of proof for mining outside the boundary waters. And the testimony you're gonna to hear today, like I said, it's all gonna be based on science and data and, and, and um, important information. My testimony today is simply anecdotal. And it's simply this. In 1979, I made my first visit up to the Boundary Waters. And I've gone up there once or twice a year, every single year, missing one year in, over the, in all those years, and it was 2016. It's the only year I didn't make my Boundary Waters trip. And in 1982, I took my girlfriend up there. And we were sitting in our canoe, watching the sun go down and a, a beaver was paddling alongside of our canoe and there was a loon calling off in the distance. And I sat there in that solitude and that serenity of that moment with no one in the world around me except for my girlfriend. And I looked in the front of the canoe and thought to myself, this is the woman I'm gonna spend the rest of my day with, rest of my life with, sorry, the rest of my life with. And that has been proven true. 
The Boundary Waters for me is a special place as enriched um, for me as my spirit and my soul. I will never forsake our sacred duty to protect the Boundary Waters for our ancestors, for our descendants, and for my wife. So let's prove it first. Thank you, Chris. Great. Thank you so much, Senator, for that uh, uh, personal experience uh, that, that, that you've had there. Uh, we'll, we'll now begin with uh, uh, statements from our, our nonprofit uh, uh, representatives here. And we'll begin with uh, 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 Catherine Hoffman, the, the President and CEO of the Minnesota Center for Environmental Advocacy. Uh, Catherine? Yeah, thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. Um, and I really appreciate the support of so many legislators across the state who have recognized the need for Prove It First legislation for sulfide mining. I'm Katherine Hoffman. I'm the CEO of the Minnesota Center for Environmental Advocacy. The sulfide mining proposals put forward in Minnesota so far are in the headwaters of two of Minnesota's most important waterways. The largest river flowing into Lake Superior and the rivers flowing into the Boundary Waters wilderness. There has never been a sulfide mine that has not resulted in significant water pollution. With every new sulfide mine proposal, we're promised this time will be different. But hollow promises like that will not protect our people or our water. MCEA's lawyers and experts have looked closely at both PolyMet and Twin Metals proposals. And all we find are the promises that have led to disaster in other places in the world. PolyMet is the first sulfide mine proposal in Minnesota history to be given permits. But those permits are built on the unstable foundation of promises. PolyMet seeks to use a mine waste dam of a design that has failed repeatedly in other places. And yet the DNR has permitted it because it promises this time will be different. PolyMet will leave a polluted lake behind that dam for hundreds of years, and the DNR has permitted that too because it promises, against all odds, that PolyMet can capture and treat the pollution for hundreds of years. But Minnesotans know the truth. Our water is our most precious resource, our people depend on it, and our future depends on protecting it. The promises of mining companies are not enough. Minnesota's waters and the people, people of Minnesota are not guinea pigs, and the communities that work and live downstream of these proposals like Duluth and Fond du Lac deserve strong legal safeguards. We cannot ignore the long track record of pollution from the sulfide mining industry. And that's why a prove it first approach like this really makes sense. And I thank all of the legislators who have brought this bill forward. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Catherine. We'll now have uh, Paula McAbee uh, from Water Legacy. Paula, please go ahead. Thank you so much, Chris. And thank you to Friends of the Boundary Waters Wilderness and to members of the Minnesota Legislature for your leadership. Water Legacy supports a Prove It First law. Prove It First will ensure that Minnesota protects clean waters to sustain life rather than bolstering the profits of foreign corporations. Prove It First will make sure that downstream communities, whether they be the Fond du Lac Band or the city of Duluth, are protected from the harm of sulfide mining. Former DNR Commissioner Tom Landwehr once told a roomful of lawyers, including me, that his job was to grant permits for sulfide mines. So that's what he'd do. We've seen what happens without a Prove It First law in Minnesota. PolyMet and Glencore and their consultants made ridiculous assumptions to get their permits. They claimed unlined waste piles don't leak, that water flows uphill, so it would not affect the Boundary Waters watershed, and that they could get a permit now and figure out the design later. Right now, the only thing a sulfide mine company needs to prove before getting a permit to mine in Minnesota is that they have enough money to dig a hole. As a result, Water Legacy and our allies have gone to court to prevent permanent sulfide mine pollution and catastrophic dam failure. Prove It First would change this game in Minnesota. Minnesota mining would be completely different. 
Mining conglomerates would have to prove a sulfide mine won't pollute based on real world experience and valid science, if there is any. And DNR would have a new job. Before allowing any sulfide mine, they would have to protect people and protect the environment. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Paula. We'll now hear from uh, John Doberstein from Duluth for Clean Water. John, please go ahead. Hello, and thank you everyone for being here and for having me. My name is John Doberstein. I am president of the Duluth for Clean Water Board. We've been raising issues with copper sulfide mining proposals upstream of our community for years, and the DNR has yet to protect us. They denied us a court hearing on PolyMet, and they made decisions behind closed doors. It's obvious we need stronger laws in order to protect downstream communities like Duluth and Fond du Lac. Um, Prove It First helps our community and Duluth for Clean Water wholeheartedly supports this. I wanna thank you all for being here and I wanna thank our legislators for leading on this bill and a very special shout out to my Senator, Senator Jen McEwen. Thank you for elevating the voices of those concerned downstream. Great, thank you so much, uh, John. We'll now hear from uh, uh, Jenna Yako from the Sierra Club uh, from Duluth. Jenna, please go ahead. Thank you, Chris. My very deep gratitude for our partners here and to the Prove It First bill authors for your leadership and for the opportunity to support the statewide effort today. I'm an organizer in Duluth with Sierra Club's North Star chapter, uh, which represents 80,000 members and supporters who work to ensure communities well-being through environmental protection. Our water is the life-sustaining resource, and in Minnesota, it is core to our identity. It means everything. And our water, our livelihood, is endangered with sulfide mining corporations threatening to pollute for generations and expose downstream communities to new and unreasonable risks. We can't allow corporate greed to dismiss climate science, native treaty rights, and public health. Prove It First would appropriately put the burden of proof on sulfide mining companies to show that they have operated and closed a similar mine elsewhere without polluting water. No sulfide mine in North America has met this basic standard, and we should expect no less for our home. The Sierra Club urges legislators to protect Minnesota and all its communities by passing Prove It First. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Jenna. And now we'll hear from Steve Morris from the Minnesota Environmental Partnership. Steve, please go ahead. Thank you, Chris, and thanks uh, for the introduction. And um, I greatly appreciate um, uh, being here today with this wonderful selection of individuals. Um, uh, my name is Steve Morris. I'm the Executive Director of the Minnesota Environmental Partnership. Uh, we are a statewide coalition of more than 70 environmental and conservation organizations. Uh, it's great to see so many legislative leaders, so many of our elected leaders here today to support this effort and to hear their powerful statements. MEP has supported this approach as a comprehensive statewide strategy to put a pause on development of this high hazard new type of mining until they are proven to be able to operate and protect our water. As you've heard, this has yet to happen. Waiting to prove it first is not a significant delay when we think about the time scale of careful monitor, monitoring required for these new types of mines of 500 years or more. This ore will still be there after this is proven elsewhere, if it is proven elsewhere. Our coalition stands in support of the many persuasive points presented here today. Thank you. Great, thank you, Steve, uh, for your statement there. Uh, we're now at, at the point of the, the program here where we, where we can take uh, questions and answers from members of the press. So uh, uh, members of the press, if you would uh, uh, please turn your, your, your video and, and sound on and uh, direct your question. If you'd please introduce your name first and, and to whom you are directing your questions. So uh, I welcome uh, questions from uh, members of the press here. If you uh, uh, would please go ahead. Hi, this is Jennifer Bjorhus at the Star Tribune. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Okay, Good. go ahead, Jennifer. Audio issues, so thanks. Um, so three quick questions. Um, did I hear you right that Wisconsin doesn't have any hard rock mines? Is that correct? Oh, what, what it was is uh, when the law was in effect in Wisconsin from 1998 until uh, 2017, that, that no uh, 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 copper sulfide mines were permitted during that time because uh, the, the mining companies could, could not meet the, the burden of proof of proving that it had been done elsewhere safely. That's, uh, that, that, that's uh, the, the status of the, the Minnesota uh, or the Wisconsin law there, Jennifer. Did they have any prior to 20, in 1998? I mean, is there a copper mine? There isn't a copper mine there, is there at all? Uh, there, there was a, a, a copper mine at, at, at one time uh, uh, in, in Wisconsin. Uh, it, 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 did, it did cause uh, uh, environmental pollution from the, the sulfide in, in the ore. How closely does this prove it bill follow the Wisconsin language? Is it very, very, very similar, identical, or just sort of? It, 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 it's similar. It, 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 we received uh, recommendations from the, the legislative sponsor of, of the Wisconsin bill uh, back from the 1997-1998 time period and incorporated some refinements of the, of the bill to, to, uh, to strengthen it and to, to make the language a little more straightforward. Okay, and I'm curious how bipartisan your list of legislative supporters is. You, you said you have 60 lawmakers backing it, is that right? Uh, 16, one, one, six. Yes. Okay. How right, right. is it? Any Republicans? Uh, right now, we do not have any Republican uh, uh, members. Uh, the, the the bill, um, the protecting uh, uh, the, the boundary waters in, in Lake Superior from uh, from the threat of copper sulfide mining is is very uh, um, is is very popular in, in public opinion polls, and and we think that it is uh, good politics from elected officials of all backgrounds, and and so we look forward to uh, to securing bipartisan support for for the bill. Thank you very much. And you know, uh, and, uh, on that final note, uh, Jennifer, the Wisconsin law, when it when it passed in, in 1998, had uh, bipartisan support and, and near unanimous unanimous support from uh, uh, Republicans as well as Democrats when it passed, and and we hope to uh, replicate that same success. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Jennifer Bjorhus. Uh, other questions for uh, uh, for for anyone uh, uh, that that spoke this afternoon? Hi, this is Renee from WDIO. Nice to see everybody. Uh, a lot of mention about polymets, and they already have their permits. Uh, I know some of them are still suspended, but is this more aimed at the Twin Metals project or future mines um, that have not gotten their permits yet? No, I'll have, uh, I'll have uh, Paula McAbee from Water Legacy address this question. Paula, please go ahead. Thank you for your question, Renee. And I think you're right that the permits to mine were issued by the um, Minnesota and they are now suspended by the courts. So no pollution or destruction can take place until the litigation is done. And this Prove It First is really intended to protect all of Minnesota. Not only the Twin Metals Project, but there are a number of other projects that are in an exploration state throughout Minnesota in the Boundary Waters, Lake Superior, and even the Mississippi River watersheds. So Prove It First is looking at the state as a whole to protect it and to protect the resources and the human beings. Great, thank you, Paul. I think uh, Senator uh, McEwen would like to speak as well. Uh, I, I couldn't have said it better than Paula. She is really the expert in all of this, so, um, but I, I, I agree that that has been a big concern for me in Duluth is this sense that this opening that PolyMet could represent, if PolyMet actually were to happen and go forward, could be disastrous. We're not talking just about PolyMet or about Twin Metals um, in the Boundary Waters, Waters Rainier River watershed, but we're talking about potentially other mines um, throughout the Duluth complex that could open up the entire region to this type of mining um, under um, unacceptable circumstances with the technology just not there and putting our entire region and our, in the city of Duluth at risk. Great, thank you, Senator. Do we have, uh, 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 see we have uh, uh, Dan Crocker from uh, Minnesota Public Radio. Uh, Dan, if you'd please go ahead. Thanks, Chris, I appreciate it. 
I haven't had a chance to look at the legislation yet, but could somebody define uh, how is pollution defined in the bill? I mean, you know, there's a wide range from catastrophic dam failures to exceeding a sediment standard. I mean, is it what what is what does a mine have to do to, to, to be able to prove it in the terms of this legislation? Great. Th thank you, Dan. And uh, following the press uh, conference, we'll, we'll send you the, the, the text of the legislation so that you can can, can uh, read it from, from yourself there. But um, in the, in the, the, the section uh, that, that's, that's relevant to your question there, it, it, uh, it explains that, uh, uh, that it, without resulting in a release of a hazardous substance, hazardous waste, or pollutant or contaminant, as defined under section 115 uh, uh, B.02. So it's referencing existing statutory language as, as a, and using those terms of art in, in, the, in the definition uh, for, for, the, for the bill here. Could, could somebody else, oh, did somebody want to jump in? I'm sorry. Please, please continue, Dan, or, or, or uh, if, if others, uh, if, uh, want to address this, whether uh, other nonprofit partners or elected officials, please please feel free to um, piggyback on my comments there. An another quick question then, Chris. Um, could somebody <clears throat> or a few of you respond? I mean, some of the some of the folks supporting Polymet and Twin Metals have already put out statements basically saying this that this is basically a mining moratorium bill with 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 di with different language on it. That the groups opposing or supporting this aren't really interested in seeing a mine prove it first. That this is really about stopping copper nickel mining in Minnesota. Um, was hoping that that some folks could respond to that. Then I, I think it's about uh, stopping catastrophic uh, and, and permanent uh, pollution of our of our natural resources. So it's about stopping that. And it's a reasonable request to, to have uh, entities that uh, ha, uh, have not operated in the state to, to prove that they can do it first, uh, that, that they can do it safely. So it's about stopping pollution and, and the, the catastrophic impact on, on human health that, that can result from this. And uh, if uh, Representative Dabney, do you want to uh, expand on that comment? Thank you, Chris. And, and just briefly, Dan, I think, I think of this legislation as a recognition that Minnesota's mining regulatory structure is intended for uh, taconite and iron ore mining, not copper nickel mining. And yet there's very different uh, pollution threats to those two different types of mining. So we don't have the regulatory structure we need now. We need the corporations who want to come in and as Ms. McAbee uh, illustrated in a variety of watersheds, to show that they can do it safely. It's a simple standard, it's a common sense standard, and it recognizes uh, our current situation as well as the need to preserve our environment. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Dabney. Uh, uh, Paula McAbee, do you wanna uh, uh, provide a co additional comments there? I think that, thank you very much, Chris. And um, I think Representative Dabney made one of the critical points. The other point, um, Dan, is if the, copper mining industry is saying this is a moratorium, they are effectively admitting that the science and the evidence is not there to prove that this type of sulfide mining is safe in Minnesota. So if they're calling it a moratorium, they're basically waving the white flag of surrender and saying the science is not there to justify what we're doing. Thank you, Paula. Renee, do you have a follow-up question? I do, yes. Yeah. So I'm wondering if um, if you're asking for the prove it first to happen in other states, what if they don't have the same regulations as Minnesota does? So maybe another state doesn't have as strict of, of rules and it pollutes there. How can you guys say that's equal to what Minnesota would ask for here? Does that make sense? Sure. Th thank you, Renee. It'll, it'll be based on uh, what would be a, a release of a hazardous substance or hazardous waste or, or contaminant uh, under Minnesota standards. So, so if there's uh, independent scientific proof that shows that those mines released uh, hazardous substances or, or contaminants uh, based on Minnesota standards, that, that would show that that mine had not operated safely in, 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 at, at that other location. Oh, what I guess I mean, though, is... Um if those states don't have the same 
like rules in place to prevent that from happening as Minnesota does? How can you compare the two or wherever, whatever state it is? How can you compare if, if it's not sure. the same regulations, you know? Sure, sure. I, so there, there's maybe two parts of that. One, one is that we're, it's, uh, the, uh, it's not necessarily dependent upon a, a violation of, of a law in, let's say, Montana or Utah. But if there's documentation that there was pollution caused from, uh, from that, that mine that was uh, you know, scientific proof, uh, you know, using the uh, Minnesota definition of a hazardous substance or hazardous waste or contaminant, then, then that, that would be uh, evidence that those mines did not operate safely. So, so Senator McEwen, did you want to add, add any, any more to that comment? Yeah, I mean, I would, I would just say also, in addition to that, that, you know, if another state has really terrible environmental regulations, then that's really too bad. I, 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 I they, but I, I, I certainly wouldn't want to encourage um, companies to be, these international mining conglomerates to be, um, you know, say, well, it's not fair for you to not let us mine in Minnesota because where we were mining over in this other state, we didn't have to adhere to these, to these strong regulations. Well, they should be doing what's right anyway. They should be doing what's right, whether it's in Montana or whether it's in Africa or anywhere around the world. So when we, we raise our standard, when we raise our expectations for these companies, we're raising the standards for other people as well around the world. And these, these companies need to be held responsible for what they're doing around the world, through the environment, through public health, for all people. And so they can't, they can't just follow some terrible regulation somewhere else and then say, well, you can't hold us to this higher standard because we're not being held to a higher standard over there. They know what the standard should be. They know how they should be conducting themselves. So again, it goes back to this idea that we are not willing in northern Minnesota to be a test case for these billionaires to do their experiments on our water and our public health. We are just not. Thank you, uh, uh, Senator McEwen. Uh, uh, Catherine Hoffman from MCA, do you want to uh, add to the comments there? Actually, Senator McEwen just said it better than I could have, so okay. I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Can I ask one more question? Yeah, please. Uh, was it Chris? Did you mention Flambeau? Did, is it safe to say that nothing in the United States right now, a uh, former or current mine, would would meet your your uh, standard here with this prove it first? So Flambeau wouldn't Eagle is just a newer mine in Michigan, so that hasn't closed yet, so we wouldn't have the ten years um, post. So is it safe to say nothing right now would meet the standard, including Flambeau? That is correct. Uh, Flamble and Eagle Mines would not would not meet the standard. And I, you know, I just want to add, Chris, that the purpose of the law is that the mining companies bear the burden. So they have the opportunity to make the case if they believe that there is a site that meets that standard. Uh, question for uh, the legislators on the phone on, on the call here. Um, I'm wondering. There's been other bills that have been introduced in past sessions, but um, they haven't gotten far. I guess other bills taking aim at, at copper nickel mining, they haven't gotten very far. What's different about this this year? I mean, is this going to, do you feel like this one has momentum or, or, or what's your general feeling on being able to get this uh, in the law? Great. Uh, thank you, uh, Jimmy Lovern from uh, Duluth News Tribune. Uh, so, uh, Senator, uh, Representative Daphne, would you like to respond to that? Uh, thank you, Chris. And, and the real answer to that question is the growing momentum uh, and broad base of support for protecting the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. As I worked with my uh, colleagues over the, through the election process, including uh, my newly elected colleagues, I found that many Minnesotans were raising at the door or on the phones or on the Zooms, the question of what are you gonna to do to protect the Boundary Waters? What are you gonna to do to protect Minnesota's waters? People in Minnesota want to see this area protected. Their elected officials have heard that message. We should move forward on this simple common sense legislation. 
Great. Thank you, Representative Dabney. If uh, other elected officials, perhaps uh, uh, either uh, Senator Torres Reyes or Representative Morrison or, or Senator Kwasinski, you know, please, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, make comments as well. I think the, um, I'll just add to what um, Representative Dabney said and say that the, the momentum's on our side. If there's some silver linings that are coming out of COVID and one of them clearly is the, the, the necessary and need to get people outside. And when we're outside, we get rejuvenated, we get um, uh, recreated. And the Boundary Waters is the largest um, wilderness preservation area east of the Mississippi River, I do believe, and um, the most visited in the lower 48. So let's preserve this place and get people going up there and um, experiencing this place that I've had the joy and pleasure are visiting for over 40 years. Great. Would other elected officials uh, like to provide a, a, a comment as well to that? I, this I would is Patricia Torres Ray. I, I would like to um, expand on uh, Representative Davney's comment. I think that the coalition is really growing. I, on my end, I have been working with uh, a significant group involving people of color and indigenous people who are very engaged in conversations about our environment. And I think this divide that has been presented to us between, you know, activists and labor or environmentalists versus people who want to create better economies for our, uh, for our state uh, do not exist really for young people. They are working together to really look at the vitality of the region, the protection of the planet, the inclusion of uh, you know, all communities in this conversation. And that is growing exponentially. I, I think that um, we, we are building on that momentum and in that capacity that we have as a state and as a community that is so diverse, bringing voices from all over the state and really uh, uplifting the voices of people in the region, in the lo local communities that have said time and time again, you know, we want, uh, we want support from the legislature to, you know, get more jobs, but it cannot be only the mining jobs. You know, we, we have other more sustainable industries that we want to expand and grow. And that is what we support. And we think that we have really the support of many, many people around the state of Minnesota Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator. Um, Representative Morrison. I was just going to add that, you know, I thought it was interesting. The, the, the polling surveys that were done last summer showed that even people who had never been to the Boundary Waters or to Lake Superior felt very strongly about protecting them. We're very proud of our water in Minnesota. That is not a partisan issue. And people are very invested in protecting those sacred places. Uh, and I think there's a growing understanding among Minnesotans that sulfide, copper sulfide mining is a very different animal than the traditional iron ore taconite mining that we're used to in this state. And people do not want us to take that risk. Um, and if we are gonna take that risk, we better be darn sure that it is as safe as possible. And unfortunately, uh, that has not been able to be shown yet. Great, thank you uh, so much, Representative Morrison. Uh, do we have a, a additional questions for uh, uh, from the media? Sorry, one more from Renee. Um, so I know a lot of people are consuming these minerals and the mining companies will say, you know what, we can do it responsibly. The United States is consuming a lot of this. We're using all of it through these Zoom calls. Uh, what is your response to that? Um, if, if Minnesota shouldn't, should we not be part of that? Um, effort to get those minerals? Is, do you just don't think there's a way at all we can, we can ever access those minerals safely? Or what is your response to, to the need for these minerals? Sure, thank you uh, so much, Renee, uh, for that question. I'll have uh, Catherine Hoffman from MCA ans answer that question. So Catherine, please go ahead. Uh, sure, thanks, Renee. Um, you know, of course, people do consume these minerals. Uh, and that's actually the reason why we need laws like this is because it's our responsibility as consumers to make sure that these products are created responsibly. Uh, 
we do this every day, right? We make choices between, uh, you know, do we want to buy organic or conventional produce, things like that. So we often think as consumers about how our products are made and making sure that copper is mined responsibly is part of that uh, responsibility that we have as consumers. Um, and I think, you know, we can have both. I think it is, you know, in theory possible for copper to be mined safely, but we do need to make sure that the mining companies can show that uh, first, and that's really the, the purpose of this law. I would also add that, um, you know, there's really no evidence of a copper shortage in uh, the world. Uh, in fact, there's a glut. And so we don't really need to mine these minerals with any urgency. Our Minnesota deposits are pretty small, relatively speaking. Uh, you know, this would be less than 1% of the global copper market if we were to mine at Polymet and Twin Metals. So it's not really fixing any shortage problem, nor is there one. And there's a lot of opportunities to increase recycling that we have not explored as a state or as a country, um, all of which are you know, good options before we start looking at digging more holes in the ground. Great, thank you so much, Catherine. Uh, do any legislators wanna to respond to Renee's question? Okay, I know that we are, uh, uh, at, at the, uh, the time for, for this uh, press conference to, to conclude, but uh, I want to make certain that we do answer uh, all the questions that we have uh, from the media. Uh, uh, would you, uh, any, any uh, other questions from the media? Please, uh, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, you know, a, a few final uh, housekeeping items here that this press conference was uh, recorded and uh, our friends of the Boundary Waters Wilderness will make a, a, a copy of this recording available to you. Uh, if you uh, do not get, get a copy of, of that recording and you want to, you may uh, uh, reach out to Friends of the Boundary Waters Wilderness. You may uh, reach out to, to me, uh, uh, Chris Knopp at the Friends there. Or, or you may reach out to uh, my colleague, uh, Maya Swope here. And uh, uh, so uh, please reach out to me. My cell phone, if there's a question from the media on, the, on not getting a copy of, uh, of the recording is 651-999-9565. Again, that's 651-999-9565 if you need a copy of their recording, which should be available within the next half hour as well. And, and thank you, Maya, for putting your email address as well in, in the chat in the chat area, uh, where you can reach out to email by by Maya, who will be getting that recording. You know, just a, a final comment here. Uh, uh, thank you to to all of you uh, that that are were part of this uh, press conference. All the elected officials that are providing the leadership all the organizations that are providing the leadership and, uh, and the members of those organizations that provide that support as well. So uh, thank you so, so very much. Have a, 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 great, a great afternoon. Goodbye.